This is the final video in our series for the CAT Computer Application Technology PRAC exam from 2023, paper one. It is the June paper, not the November paper, so a good supplementary paper to practice on. And so we're doing the final quick integrator question, so which involves multiple packages. So let's get into it. So here we've got the first question, which says we must open up the seven Cape Town word processing document, which I've got over here already. And let's start with 71.1. Change the inside borders of the table to any blue color. So yeah our table we're going to click on the table and they want the inside borders that's the inner borders over there so to, for that we're going to come here to the borders and shading and let's go to borders and shading over there and we want to change it to blue now if I change it to blue over here there's the blue one it's going to not change them but then I'm going to deselect the middle one and then add it back and you see now that it's blue and I'm going to deselect the horizontal inner one and then put that one back so that means the inside borders are going to be blue but the others will not and let's click OK. And there you can see the inside borders are all blue. If that didn't work, if it made it all blue, then you could have just deselected the outer ones, made it all blue, then changed it to black, and then changed the, the outer ones back to a different color. 7.1.2, modify the heading row of the table so it appears as that. So let's look at what it looks like and compare it to what we've got. And you can see that tourist name and tourist surname are in separate blocks over there. So we actually need to split this block. So I'm going to click on this cell, and if I come here, table layout there should be an option to split the cells I'm gonna click on split cells you could have also right clicked on it and split the cells there that would have also worked and we want to split it into two columns and be keeping it as one row and so there we go and it automatically put the names like that and there we go we've done that correctly for one mark 7.1.3 the tourist receives points that can be used as a discount in the future insert a formula to calculate the points for Alan Nell as follows the total visits from 2020 to 2023 then display a thousand if the points are more than five otherwise 500 points must be split. So this is like an if statement in word so let's go see what they want us to do we want to insert a formula if we know our if statements from Excel then we should be able to do our if statement here so there are two scenarios of what must be displayed if the total visits from 2020 to 2023 is more than five then we must display a thousand otherwise it's 500 so there's the total visits so we're going to say equals if now we want to add those visits together. So it's the 2020, 20 to 2023. So we want to add those two numbers together. So we want to sum those values. So we're going to say equals the sum of all those two blocks. We're summing to the, not to the above it, but to the beyond, say to the left. So we're going to sum the left. That's going to add all the numbers that are to the left. Even though there's text there, it'll wherever there are numbers, it'll sum those together. And if that sum, we're going to ask a question, if that sum is more than five, if that sum is greater than five, not including five, but more than five, then we must display a thousand. So then we're going to say comma, and it's going to work just like Excel. The first block is what is displayed if it's true. So we'll put a thousand, and then I'll put another comma, what will be displayed when it's false that'll be 500 so this works exactly like an if statement in excel that's my condition that's what happens if it's true that is what happens if it's false and it says a thousand so if i change this number to a zero and then i right click on that one and i update the field it displays it to 500 so therefore it is working so when we click on it you can see if the formula is like an if statement we sum to the left if it's greater than five then display a thousand else display 100 that was a tricky one if you haven't done if statements so there we can see how to do it so that means that is done so we can save all those changes and we can close it and now we can go to the seven tourist spreadsheet which i've got open over here and we work in the list worksheet there's the list and do the following apply a spreadsheet feature to column a to arrange the text into columns find and replace all occurrences of the word maybe with the word no so we want to replace all of these into columns so i'm going to click on this column and there must be a way to convert this into columns now that's got something to do with the date let's go look at the data option see what's there ah uh, do you see there's a text to column option so let's try that if I click on that it's going to ask what is this data delimited by so it's not a fixed width they're all different widths depending and it's delimited by values so let's go with that let's go next and it's using the tab so there's tabs in there so you can see that they're tabs so it's using the tab to delimit the data and looks like it's going to do it correctly so I'm happy with that let's go next and we're happy with all the data I'm just going to click on finish and there we go we've got our data into different columns so just by going to data text to columns because they had 
put the data in tabs it was able to divide everything evenly so let's just make that a bit smaller so that we can see everything they then asked me to replace the word maybe with the word no in red font so over here there's maybe so we want to find and replace so that's going to be under home and there's the find and select so we want to find and replace and we want to find the word maybe and we want to replace it with the word no but they said replace with no in red font so while we are on this replace option let's click on options and let's go to the format of this one we're going to change the format of it and we want the font color to be in red so let's click there and click on red that's the red that we want over there so we're changing the word to no in red so let's go and replace all and there were 10 replacements done. And you can see that, that there's no more maybe. So I think that is correct. Let's move on to the details worksheet. Let's come here to details. Every year, tourists receive a message one month before their birthday about a special voucher they can use when they book a trip. Use a combination of features. So it's five marks to deter in cell D2 to determine the date in the current year in which this person received a message. The current year must be entered as a function. So we must use the current year as a function. So let's come over here. We're going to click over here. Now, remember when they did this paper, they did it in 2023. You might be doing this in 2024. So our data might be a little bit different. So we want the current year so we want 2024 so we want to work out a month before their birth date so that's their birth date so we first of all want to have a date which is the current year so we're going to use a date function so before i do that let's just try work it out into little blocks so to get the current date we can say equals today and that will get the current date so now we want the year of today so we're going to say equals the year of the current date and that will give me 2024 so that's the year that i want to put now to get the month we need to get the month of when you were born but minus one so we're going to say equals the month function of the date and that's going to give us six but we want to go one before it so we're going to say minus one and that's made it a date but let's make it into a number so that's the fifth month that's correct and then the day that we want well the day must be the exact same day as that so we say equals day of that date for the current message now remember they did this paper in 2023 so that's why we've got 2024 as our example but if we were going to do an alert date we would say the current date 2024 that month and that day so i think that is correct so we could then go and say equals date using that here comma using that month comma that day and then we'll get the date that we want to convert. Now, you could then break this up by doing so. Instead of G2, you are actually going to say, well, that the year is the year from the today function which is exactly what we did in those two blocks. So we've got the today, we've got the year of today. So that means I just did it in one step. And then to get that one, H2, that formula, if you remember correctly, was the month of this block, minus one. and the R2, if you remember correctly, was the day of this block. If you'd used building blocks, I think you would have been fine. And we get the same result. So that's how you did it in one step. But you could have used little building blocks here. Try and work it out. Okay, so that's how we get the date for the alert message. Obviously, just remember, whatever year you do this exam paper in, that'll be the year that you use there. But in they did this paper in 2023, so they wanted it to be 2023 because that would have been the current date of that exam. There we go. I think we are done with this question paper. Well done, grade 12s. If you need more exam papers to practice on, then go to our YouTube channel and then click on the playlist button and then you'll see links to other videos that can help you prepare for your upcoming exams. But make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss if we post new ones. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.